Welcome to the F Word at Claridge's. On the menu tonight, the best brigade of the Sears are back. <laughs> to cook king crab tortellini, leg of lamb, and shepherd's pie made from my sheep. Yeah. And hot chocolate souffle with mint chocolate chip ice cream. Plus, Johnny Vegas tries to pull a fast one in the recipe challenge. The machine's making it for you. Is it bollocks? Cheating fuck-ups. I don't work for you. <laughs> you can't speak to me like this. Hugh Furley Wittenstall helps me cook the most exciting bits of my lamb. This will certainly be the freshest set of brains I've ever worked with. Really? And Ricky Gervais has a go at my extras. He walked into the restaurant the other week <laughs> carrying a stag. Who do you think you are? Four. <laughs> In, in, in. My northern stars, welcome back. Fucking well done. Thank How do you feel? Sure. Oh, absolutely fantastic. Yes. Out of this world with it. Good. Very excited yes. to be back. Out there are some very discerning, demanding clients, yeah? Customers that are expecting the best of the best, yeah? Bloody good to have you back. Thank you. Yes. Nice to be here. Let's get yeah. going, yeah? Right, time for the starter, yes? King crab tortellini, yes? Ready? Yes, chef. Yeah. First, Susan. Yeah, we're gonna kill the crab. Oh. Yeah, oh, don't look at that. Don't, don't, don't turn your nose up at that. Yeah, of course. Here. It's got a lot of effort. Hold the crab. Oh, oh, Hold the crab! Oh, no. Take oh. the crab! For oh. God's sake, woman, let's go. Oh, no. Right, on here, please. Oh. Excuse me, if you're going to cook it, we're going to have to kill it first. I up. don't mind you killing it, I can't touch it. Susan, you're acting like a soft southern Jesse. Come on, stop fucking around. Oh, In there, through there. Knife on there, very carefully, and bang, straight through. And then we crunch throw through there, okay? Got to kill it quickly, okay? Say goodbye to him first. What's he called? You name him. Bye, Gordon. Right, through, 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 through. Put your hand through. Quick, straight away. That's it, good. Good girl, right. Excellent. And now we're going to take off the cluster. Through. Yes, there's one cluster. Hold it, please. Hold it. There you go. And there's your second cluster. In the water. Nice. Bring it back to the boil. Cook it. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Okay, good. Right, on order. First table, yes. Four covers, table two. Four tortellini, four lamb, four chocolate souffle. Yes, yes chef. chef. Right, let's get on with the tortellinis, yes? We're going to serve two tortellinis per portion, yes? Yes, yes, yes chef. With two thirds of a spoon, and we just egg wash half a tortellini. Judith, why do we do that? To make it stick. That's right. Up into your hands, push and nipple the air out. You ladies have got disciplined fingers, you can do that. Yes, yeah? yes, chef. Okay, right, let's just quickly go through the sauce together. Yeah, lemongrass, olive oil, yes? It's like a sort of tomato olive oil sauce, yes? Shallots in there. We've got our basil, our coriander, tomatoes in, and just leave that cooking away. Right, tortellinis, let's go. One and a half minutes, gently boiling water. Right, sauce out, ready to serve. Pasta's cooked, and then from there, onto the plate. King crab tortellini, we're a fresh Tomato and lemongrass vinaigrette. You happy with those? Yes, yes chef. chef. Yeah. Would you pay for them? Yes, Go, yes, please, chef. yes. yes Table ten there, JB, please, yes. Q yes. Foley Wedding Store. <laughs> Sandra? Yes, chef. Apparently, you upset your mum last time you were on the F word, yes, by swearing, is that right? Yes, chef. I had a pep talk before we left this morning, me and Susan. We were oh, about to I walk out of the chef. door. Imperial leather soap is not good. I had to have my mouth washed out with it after my mother saw that programme. Was she blamed you, chef? Serious. Why do I always get the blame? <laughs> I don't mean to swear. You know that. Oh, it's the company I'm in. Oh, oh, chef. Oh, oh, chef. Oh, 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 trust me, ladies, it's fucking great to have you back in there. Yes? That's nice. Let's go. Table nine here. Very nice. Uh, Susan, yes, you're in charge of the hot plate while I'm gone for 30 seconds, OK? Yes, chef. Keep this area nice and tidy. Yes, yes chef. Fuck me. Fuck Does that me. mean I check them? Hello, Johnny. How are you? How are you doing, fella? Nice to see you. Yeah. Yeah, enjoying your Santa? Yeah, fantastic. Yes. So good to see you. Yeah, no, yes. so good to be here, mate. You're a very brave man. Later, we're head-to-head -head on the recipe challenge. How do you fancy the chances? 
I really fancy my chances. I think it's something that's beyond you. I think you've developed beyond <laughs> simple good food. Serious? Let me just show you where we're going to be cooking. Can I have a quick look at the kitchen? Right, yes. Okay, uh, then. I'll show you. Give you a head start. So you're not so nervous. Ladies. Uh, when you get in here. Uh. Hey, I don't bring yes. you to chat. Work the room. <laughs> <laughs> These ladies are also from Lancashire. Ladies, please. Johnny. Yes, yes Johnny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ladies, share the bus on. Let's go. Come round, come round, come round, Johnny. Come round. Don't take no grief. Nah. Huh? No. This is Susan. Oh, so oh hello, yes, darling. Judy. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Sandra and Justine. <laughs> right. Right, Vegas, out of the kitchen. I'll see you for the challenge. What's it like? What's it like? What's it like on the name? As long as you don't burn anything, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. Johnny. Don't cook for them. Uh, cook for you. <laughs> get out. Get out. Uh, you kick one cheek and I'll kick the other half of his uh, ass. Get Johnny Vegas out of this kitchen now, please, yes? Yeah? Bloody hell. No. Like me, Hugh, the shaggy sheep farmer, doesn't like to waste anything. I've just slaughtered my sheep and have invited Hugh Foley Wisdomstall around for tea. Yeah. Busy day at the abattoir? Yeah, extraordinary day. What have you got for He's here to help me cook up a family feast with some of the more unusual cuts. The most amazing brains and the breads. Wow. Uh, they are extraordinary. It's a little uh, while since I've cooked sheep's brains. Really? So you've got the two different types of sweet breads, aren't there? The long, thin one, obviously being the throat glands. That's the and throat then, sweet bread, isn't yep, it? Yep, and, and they're the, the heart. heart. Yeah. Look at them, they're beautiful, huh? Huh? Very tender. See, it's really weird having taken them out myself. This will certainly be the freshest set of brains I've ever worked with. Ready. Now, do you think Tana and the kids will eat sweetbreads and brains? Tana will definitely. Jack will definitely. The girls, I'm not too sure, you know that. Good to have your garden back. Um, it will be, yeah, when it's all done, but uh, I don't know. It's really weird. Within hours, you start to miss them, isn't it? Well, where is Gavin now? Oh, he's up in uh, Oxfordshire, roaming around and having some fun. still got his knackers? Yes. So he can be a breeding ram? I think he's going into happy retirement. What an extraordinary turn of fortunes for him. I know. Right, I'm just going to quickly sweat off these... Um, God, you're way ahead of me now. ...onions. No, you don't worry. Me, you give me take... the bum job again. I'm caramelising my onions in muscovado sugar. It gives a really nice, dark, rich, semi-spice. And then just going to put some balsam and vinegar in there and just sort of caramelise them, almost like an onion marmalade. I'm going to put mine in slowly, I'm going to colour them slowly, get them nice and crispy, and then they'll take about eight to ten minutes to cook, OK? Look at that. I'm going to lightly poach them. I'm going to pop them in now, actually. All I'm going to do is, is sauté the veg, poach the brains, and add sauté the brains and put the two together. Nice. Leave them to cool down. Fire off my garlic first. Slice the sweetbreads up, now they've cooled down. Just set nicely, these brains. Nice. It's like poaching an egg. How lucky are the kids? Fried lamb's brains and caramelised sweetbreads with a marmalade of onion, capers and vinegar. You know what? I was going to do just the lightest sprinkling of cider vinegar oh, really? on the brains themselves. That is fucking pretty. Right, sit down. Hey. Two very exciting dishes. Hey, Hugh, yours is? It's uh, brains with baby spring vegetables and mint. Mmm. Wow. Yeah. And this is throat glands. <laughs> and it's... You're selling it so well, Gordon. It's sweetbreads, Meg. Daddy, I'm not that hungry. The sweetbreads are absolutely delicious. The brains, um... It's an I unusual texture. It's a very, very unusual. unusual texture. Very nice. I did like it. I prefer the brains, yeah. So do I. Oh, You've no. already had seconds <laughs> of brains. I can't believe it. <laughs> Hands up, you'd eat brains again. Mummy! Oh. Hands up, you'd eat sweetbreads again. Please. Oh, oh, no. Hey! How about if you dig a pond and get yourself a couple of crocodiles? Yeah! yeah! Oh, God. Instead of crocodiles, giraffes. I thought it was lovely. I thought it was presented very nicely and so many flavours coming through. I really enjoyed it, yeah. Why are we eating these things with legs and shells? Mm. I'm sure it was happier in the thing that its flesh was already in. And with this, <laughs> it can't even walk sideways. I feel like I've insulted the chef. Who is the chef? OK. Right, ladies, come over, please. Results, yes? The chef. Starters. The chef. Yes. Were they happy? Very happy. Oh. Yeah? Right. Give me. Here we go. Thank you. OK. 
The amount of customers that are happy to pay for their totaling of king crab out of 50. Oh, please. 46! Oh! Very good. Oh! Very, very good indeed. Well done. Well, what happened before? What did they say? Too much pasta and not enough crab. What? Oh! <laughs> and that's that's really ridiculous. Too much pasta is a little uh, disc. Uh, uh, Where is that, Johnny? Uh, yeah, it might be. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. OK, the best so far. Next on the menu, the Lancashire lassies go commando. <laughs> what? And my very special shepherd's pie proves a problem for Ricky Gervais. Where's it going to end? You and Jeremy Clarkson in a helicopter <laughs> shooting your cousins. <laughs> They're so tasty. <laughs> Welcome back to the F Word. Time for the main course, my lambs. Now, I'm doing them two ways. First up, leg of lamb. Leg of lamb, the king of all joints. Sweet, tender, very rich and absolutely delicious. A must-have for every dining table. Get your butcher to bone it out and butterfly it, basically so you can tie it and roast it. Hot oven. Season. Olive oil. Mint. Use it in abundance. It's fresh, it's fragrant, smells amazing. Goat cheese. The mint perfumes the inside of the lamb, and the goat cheese just sort of makes the center nice and creamy. Garlic. Roll. First of all, a big loop around the lamb. That keeps it all in shape. Get a nice length of string, tie a knot right at the very top underneath and leave it coming out here. The secret of tying it, this shape, helps to cook it evenly and look beautiful. Rosemary. Season. Gets the skin really nice and crispy. Olive oil. Stops the string from burning, so therefore it won't burst open when it's in the oven. And bingo. Roast. 35 minutes. Rest. Carb. Mint vinaigrette. That has confirmed it's definitely the king of roast. Roast leg of lamb with goat cheese and mint. Done. Lamb nicely seasoned. How long does this go in the oven for? They're going to take pink. About 35 to 40 minutes. Right. In, yeah? yeah. Special yeah. lamb, as you know, is going to be rested for literally the same time as it's cooked. So it's nice and pink. Not and too it, can, it can keep warm while it's resting all the time. Absolute definitely, yeah. without a doubt. So it's really important now to get some colour on the lamb. Yeah? Uh -huh. Yes, chef. Okay. Up. Okay, good. Yeah, that'll be better. Tonight I'm serving the lamb two ways. You've seen the leg, and this is the nation's favourite. Shepherd's pie, a great British classic. Absolutely delicious. Mince, vegetables, potatoes. Easy. Olive oil. Minced lamb. A little bit of colour on the mince, and it gets rid of that unwanted fat. Nothing worse than a greasy shepherd's pie. Season. Great. Onion. Carrot. Garlic. Once the vegetables are grated in there, they disintegrate and almost puree, adding great flavour. And that's the secret behind a really good shepherd's pie. It's all in the mince. Worcester sauce. Tomato puree. Red wine. Thyme. Rosemary. Right, now the red wine's evaporated. Chicken stock in. And cook it out for three or four minutes. No more than that. Potatoes. Mash. Season. Egg yolks. Now, a secret ingredient, Parmesan cheese. Be quite generous with the Parmesan, because that's what gets it really nice and golden brown. That now deserves to sit on top of my mince. Good old-fashioned tip, just to keep my mum happy. For the top. 18 to 20 minutes in the oven. Beautiful. The crispy topping. You can see why that deserves to be a great British classic. Shepherd's pie, done. 
46 out of 50 for the starter. Try and get 50 out of 50 for the lamb, yes? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Tonight, yeah, it's all about perfection, yeah? Let's do it out of respect for my lambs, yes? Yes, yes. Judith and Susan, five portions away, please, yes? Yes, yes. yes. Let's go. Carrots take out and leave on the top there, yes? Yes, chef. Okay, let's go, ladies, yeah? Yes, chef. Nice. Let me put the lamb on there. Keep the round bit to up to the top. top. Nice. Really Carrots on, right. Nice, not too oily, please, ladies, yeah? Service, please. Wait. Yeah, table six, please, yes? Wait. Ladies. I'm getting very nervous. You're very quiet. What's the matter? We're concentrating, oh, chair. Really, what I want to know is that Oliver Burke's told me that you go commando in the kitchens. I was 21 years of age, for God's sake. <laughs> I don't get commando anymore. Yeah, but we just want you to know yeah, that we, we, we go commando. We go commando with you. <laughs> what? <laughs> we didn't even you see. Just, look, we just we go commando. Jesus Christ almighty. It's like a pair of curtains. <laughs> They're not knickers, are they? <laughs> oh, my God almighty. Oh. <laughs> Now it's time for tripe, a forgotten food that I personally want to put back on the menu. Bloody hell. Oh, yeah. It may look disgusting, but I love a bit of tripe. Now, it's very cheap, very nutritious, but sadly these days, you've got to go through a hell of a lot of shit to get hold of it. Tripe is the lining of a cow's stomach. It has been voted Britain's least favorite food, which I think is a waste. In my grandparents' day, everyone ate tribe, and I'm determined to put it back on the map. I love tribe. I grew up with tribe. It's been in the family for years, and having lived in France and Italy, that's all we used to eat for staff lunch was tribe. I've managed to get my hands on some fresh cow's guts and brought them to a tripe dresser before I can cook with them. Peter, how are you? Hi, nice Likewise, good to see you too, my man. Hey. Now it's down to you to turn into something, some magical. In 1900, there were 200 tripe dresses in Britain. And your great-great-grandfather? No. Now, there are only three. And the smell. I mean, this place just Gorgeous. stinks of tripe. <laughs> uh, what does the wife say when you get home? Uh, she doesn't. She doesn't? She left. She left. Oh, right. <laughs> Shit. Peter and I boil my tripe to make it more tender. Look like you've been doing it for years. And then bleach it to improve the colour. It's hard to believe that's the same tripe, you know, in terms of, you know, how palatable it looks now. Peter supplies Bob and Christine, who run a traditional tripe stall at the market in Accrington Stanley. How are you, buddy? How are you? All Good right. to see you well. Christine. Yep. Christine. Now, you've been selling for how long? Their customers love tripe so much here, they even eat it raw. Now, uh, how are you going to cook that? What are you going to do with the tripe? The husband eats it as it is. As it is? With salt and vinegar. Salt and vinegar, and he eats it cold? He eats it cold. Nice. Out on the green fat. To find out who's actually buying Bob's tripe, I'm going to give him a hand on the stall. Thank you. Bro, oh, that's nice and cosy in here now, isn't it? Morning, madam. Would you like some tripe, my darling? Yes. What are you going to do with it? Vinegar? Yeah, I'll have a bit of lettuce and tomato. And, madam, how old are you, please? 91 on Saturday. 91 on Saturday. Many happy returns Thank on Saturday. You. Morning. Morning, sir. What are you going to have this morning? Jelly. Honey crumbs. Is that for tonight's dinner? No, no, actually. That's just really good home. That's just for a snack. Yeah. <laughs> good man. Good man. <laughs> the fact that I've just been here for the last five minutes and watching. Yeah, you know, the customers come and, and pick up the tripe, how old they are. And in a way that, you know, there's not enough youth eating it. You know, tripe, ladies, is there anyone out there under the age of 30 who would like to buy some tripe? <laughs> Tripe's clearly got an image problem, and many young people haven't even tried it. So with Bob's help, I'm setting up my very own belly deli yes. to reinvent it as a really tasty dish. Yeah, you like that, do you? I like that. Yeah, you like that, do you? <laughs> Gong's Gut Hut, yes? Right, and Bob, what we're going to do is something sort of modern, OK? Right. So pan-fried tripe, yes, with some lemon and parsley. If we get it looking fresh and modern, a lot more people are going to eat it. Right. OK? First of all, chop some onions and garlic and sweat. So this is uh, my way of doing tripe sort of fast, you know, like fast food. Then toss the tripe in some flour and season with salt and cayenne pepper. Well, just to make it a little bit more sort of um, tangy and fresh, you use vinegar, don't you? Yeah. 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 I'm going to grate some lemon on there. Right. Yeah. And what that does, it just makes it a little bit sort of lighter, fresher, and a little bit more zestier. Yeah. And all I'm going to do now is fry it very, very quickly with some sunflower oil. Okay. All right. Season with fresh parsley and a squeeze of lemon. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're ready. Who 
would like some tripe, please? Anybody here in Akron that hasn't eaten tripe, yes? Where are all the tripe virgins? You. Here we go. Why haven't you had tripe before, my darling? Just because it just doesn't look very nice at all. Do you like it? It's really nice, actually, yeah. Yes, and it's fried it's in the pan. as well. I think I might try it myself. Yeah, good girl. Hey, look at all these new customers you're getting. You like it? Nice. Yes, how old are you? 18. That's what I want to hear. So we've gone from 90 to 18 this morning. Very nice, actually. Right, guys, come over. How are you doing? Hey. Now, this is Akron and Stanley's what? Under 11s. This dish here is full of protein. How old are you? Six. Do you like the tripe? Yes? Fantastic. It's a load of bollocks that people don't like tripe anymore because cooked in a modern way, they love it. Look at this lot. Next time you're out, get down to your butcher and get some tripe for dinner. It's delicious and healthy. Who likes some tripe? Hey. Hey. Now, I know you don't like fancy food. Did you enjoy the shepherd's pie? Absolutely wonderful. I, yes. I mean, shepherd's pie would be in, um, uh, I think, my top five. Really? Meals, so, oh, nice. and, and that was that was lovely. The mince for the shepherd's pie was from the lambs that I had in my back garden. So, hold on. So, they were basically your pets. <laughs> they weren't pets. You right. can't fall into that habit of allowing okay. them to become pets, although they are very friendly to begin with, but then you've got to sort of distance yourself from them. Yeah, but you say that, well, where's it going to end? You and Jeremy Clarkson in a helicopter <laughs> shooting your cousins. <laughs> what? You go, I kept distance from them. I didn't really know them growing up. And they're so tasty. You're it's so a... macho, aren't you? I know, I know. It's a You're so handshake. tough. I'm glad you've got your shirt on. <laughs> you always have to show a bit of that, don't you? No, no, no. no it's no. for the menopause of women. No. Goes, oh, look, he's taking his shirt off. He walked through the restaurant the other week no. carrying a stag. Who do you think you are? Four. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. No, but you enjoyed it, didn't you? I did enjoy it. Obviously, I'd rather know that that animal had a wonderful life Absolutely. and was killed humanely. Gavin um, escaped the Okay, you've given it a name. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Then why, why would you do that? What would, See, when you, when you buy it in Tesco's, there's not a name. <laughs> they don't care. This is Bob. We killed Bob. <laughs> okay. Gavin didn't die. Charlotte, unfortunately, got eaten. What, um, by a, a, uh, well, we, <laughs> a wolf? A uh, suspected puma, a wild cat, or you know, a humongous fox. Where, where do you live with these pumas <laughs> and humongous foxes? No, no it was a, it, Beckenham Palace Narnia. in the back garden. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, but this is serious. Who does the cooking at home? I do. <laughs> not. I don't know. No. Ever? No. Let me tell you why, Gordon. Please. I'm a genius. <laughs> and I've, I've got to save all those skills for other things. OK? I thought Stephen Merchant was a genius. That can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you're not just bloody brilliant at making people laugh. Uh, you're also bloody fantastic at making money. Um, the DVDs, the podcasts, the animals. Have you ever been tempted or swayed by doing an advert? No, I'm not tempted, yeah. no. I got offered a million pounds to do a gin advert in America when the office broke in America. And my agent said, I know you don't do adverts, but I just run this by you. And I went, no, I can't. Because I just thought, if I said yes, I'd regret it. So I said no. And he said, they've come back with two million. They thought I was haggling. Oh, my God. Um, I think it's because you haven't had the right product, OK? So I've got some items that I want you to have a look at and tell me how you would market them in an advert. OK, first thing. Go on. Clock. Chocolate bar. It's a delicacy in Sweden. Um, how... Aren't foreigners funny? <laughs> so how would you advertise it? How would you sit there and munch? If it's a Swedish advert, it would be a really weird one, wouldn't it? It would be something like, mm. you fed a plup. Oh, the plup. Flitty fed a plup. Oh. It would be something like that, wouldn't it? What's that one that that, that sexy rabbit used to advertise? Cadbury's caramel, no? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Tell us about that. Ready? Mm. <laughs> Sexy rabbit. <laughs> Can we cut that? <laughs> I've never had sex with any rodent. Actually, it's a lagomorph. It's not a rodent. <laughs> OK, uh, this one, you like soups, don't you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. OK, so it's a cock flavoured bouillon. <laughs> <laughs> cock flavour. Excellent. Oh, God. Slurp it up. The great taste of cock. <laughs> OK, finally, to wash it all down... Oh, for um, fuck's sake. It's closer to Sweden, it's Denmark, yeah, okay. OK? This would be... Ninja beer! <laughs> no, spunk... <laughs> <laughs> A shot of spunk vodka. <laughs> I'm slightly squeamish to drink spunk... Oh, <laughs> God! <laughs> the trouble... That, now, the trouble that that's very old spunk. <laughs> That's that spunk that's been hanging around for <laughs> quite some time. <laughs> How oh, would you God. promote um, the Danish shot of spunk vodka? Mm. 
that's the best spunk I've ever tasted. <laughs> uh, listen, really good to see you. Yeah. Wonderful. Keep the good work. Thank you very Take much. Care. James, Cheers. good to see you, my darling. Big kiss. Good to see you. I thought the lamb was excellent. Really nicely cooked, very tender, and I like the lemon zest on the top. It was delicious, the lamb, but it's a terrible shame about the goat's cheese in the middle of it. But once you've scraped it out, it wasn't bad, actually. The, the, the lamb tasted nice and tender, which is a sign that he hasn't had any stress and had a good life. Right, results. This is quite special for me. Yes, a lot of hard work, months getting that ready, yeah, in terms of looking after them, nursing them, and doing all we can to improve that flavour, yes? JB, oh. right, I thought you did a bloody good job, uh -oh. yeah? Clearly the most talented brigade we've had on so far. Definitely. However, yeah, they are the critics. They're your customers. And the amount of customers that are happy to pay oh, for the main God. course... Oh, no. Damn. Damn, I know. 48 out of 50. Ah! Well done, well done, well done. <laughs> that is not quite... Good enough. Perfect. Good enough. No. Yeah. Sweet There's room for improvement. Uh, JP, just out of interest, why didn't two pay? Um, Who was too it? Much, too much meat and too much tomato See, in the oh pie. No. Oh. JP, fuck off back to France, <laughs> will you? Yes. Uh, let's go. Dessert. Next on the menu, I let my fanny loose in the kitchen. Back off out of my kitchen, but only <laughs> after you've done the washing up. <laughs> And 18 stone of idiot takes me on in the recipe challenge. I have Gordon Ramsay parties. We all just sit around telling each other to fuck off. Welcome back to the F word. Now, it's time for me to take on 18 stone of idiots. John, are you ready? Yeah, I'm yes. ready. Nervous? No, not uh, so. Right, what are you cooking? I'm cooking pizza. Pizza? Yeah, very simple, uh, very rustic. Food of the peasants. It's bringing working class into these kitchens. And giving them a taste of something substantial. Something real. Something that they can't just drive past on a Saturday night and watch people eat and go, how do those people live? Perfect. Now, what's that? The secret uh, machine, what is that? Uh, this is my bread maker, stroker, door maker, because right. it's the one thing that I do rely on. I'm just giving you a very simple pizza, uh, fresh tomato sauce, and then top with some really nice uh, bay on ham. Just put my flour in, which is a very decent uh, double zero Italian flour. Um, what I'm going to do now is add the olive oil, but I haven't got a tablespoon measure, but it's all right, I'm going to do it by eye, my crazy guy I am. I've got my live yeast here, because I don't like the dry powdered stuff and you never get the right result with it. And start it mixing. But you're not actually making your own pizza dough, are you? are putting it together, the machine's making it for you. No, it's not. What is Cheating it's fucker. It for me. Is it bollocks? Cheating fucker. I don't work for you. <laughs> you can't speak to me like this. Johnny, be good. I am being good. <laughs> I'm going to bring water up the boil. Put my yeast in. Oh, look, it be a machine. It's the work of the devil. Whisk in the yeast that activates it. Touch of olive oil in there. Touch of salt, absolutely crucial. From there, flour into the, the normal food processor. So what, what are you using there, Gordon? Is it a machine? Uh, this is... Uh, this is, is it a machine? A, 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 is it a machine? It's a Does robot. Does it plug in? <laughs> Does it plug it's, in? But, <laughs> hey, smarty pants, what are you doing with the tomato sauce? Uh, tomato sauce is just, uh, it's just me, tomatoes, uh -huh. uh, salt, yep. tiny bit of sugar, uh -huh. oregano and um, some fresh basil. So Johnny's making a very simple tomato sauce out of tin tomatoes. I've just got some schlots and garlic and some basil here. I'm going to fry off cherry tomatoes, a few sun-dried tomatoes. So it becomes a really nice dry tomato sauce. Knead this together. Dough's needed. Put that in. Right, that goes in. Should double in size. We'll knock it back and roll it out nice and thin. Right, how are you doing, my man? I'm going to make the pizza in three different sections. Oh, really? So I'm going to have one with uh, me capers and me uh, anchovies. And then I'm going to make a gorgonzola one in the middle. Just for just for the veggies, and then on the other so end, I'm going to have like some Sounds like four meat. seasons, but you're using three seasons. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, look, I'm just spreading my options out, Anna. What is the most outrageous thing you've ever done on stage? I did do a shit, <laughs> but he deserved it. <laughs> on stage? Yeah. <sighs> I was in Liverpool. The guy came along to review it, and I went, "Oh, are you are you sort of the comedy review?" And he went, "No." I went, well, what do you do? But I normally cover pet shows. But well, what the fuck are you doing here? So I had somebody walk me around as if I was a dog. And Show me, you're on all fours. Yeah. Like the proper... <laughs> and then I, I, I just slipped my pants down and went, and just squeezed a little. 
But then we had to tell them. <laughs> Did you wipe your ass? We, I told them it was a prop. I was with my technician, pretending it wasn't real shit, and I went, it's not even real. If you lose the challenge tonight, yeah, don't shit on me, OK? No, ah. no, I won't. I So this is my dough. I'm just going to roll it out, slacken it off a little bit and just sort of get it really nice and pliable and then roll it nice and thinly. You're using a rolling pin? I am using a rolling pin. You big girl. So tomato on first. A nice thin layer of tomato sauce on there. What kind of mozzarella are you using, the big ones or the little baby ones? Uh, the big ones. You copying me again? Yeah, I just live, you know what I mean, uh, to follow you. Yeah. If I could get clothes in your style, I would. That's nice. That's I have very Gordon nice. Ramsay parties. <laughs> we all just sit around telling each other to fuck off. And then finish with some really nice Parma ham. Right, ready? Yeah. And it goes. There you go. The three seasons that you've been taking the piss out of. Looks like fucking school dinners. Right, no, so. It fucking doesn't. Okay, so... cut up. Looks nice. Right. So there we've got that. We've got ham. Um, yep. Uh, obviously, all this all over. Yeah. Uh, just ham and mushroom. <laughs> and then there we've got the gorgonzola. And then we've got the seafood. Yes. People have a choice. Yeah. In this world. Up. Oh. Right. Good hot oven. Yeah. In it goes. Right. Johnny, they're in the oven now. Yes. Yeah. Ten minutes. Go and have a pint. Come back. And you lose. No, I'm going to stay and observe because... You're paranoid. No, I'm got, I might need to put a little foil on. If the See, my base is a little bit thicker than yours and handmade. Right. And made with passion. So, uh, I might have to cover the top because I don't want the top to overcut before the base has got nice and crispy. You mean you might have to get a takeaway? No, it means I might have to do a shit on yours while it's in the oven. Now it's time for dessert, a delicious hot chocolate souffle made by Ravinda, who last week I chose to be my new fanny. Ravinda, well done. Uh, good to see you. Oh. Um, you're now going to make the most amazing hot chocolate souffle. Teach the nation, yeah? Please don't fuck it up. Thank yes? you. So I'm going to show you how to make the most indulgent, decadent hot chocolate souffle. Take 200 mils of milk, add 20 grams of corn flour, when it's in a really yogurty texture, you know it's kind of ready. And there you go, it's nicely thickening up. Chop the chocolate. Don't skimp on it. It needs to be about 60 to 70% cocoa content because you need to taste the chocolate in this. Add four egg yolks. It's really important that the chocolate is a little bit cooler, otherwise what you get is this horrible scramble from the eggs. My mother used to say, a clear work surface is a clear mind. Gordon's got all the dishes to do. I hope he's a good washer upper. Whisk the egg whites. Slowly add 150 grams of caster sugar. Now, remember, this is what's breathing the life into your chocolate mix, so you don't want to overwork the mixture. You don't want to get too enthusiastic. More washing for Gordon. Really voluptuous. You can see it almost heaving. It's really sexy. Butter a ramekin and dust with grated chocolate. Clean the rim, otherwise your souffle won't rise. So just leave it alone for six minutes, do whatever you want, have sex, read a newspaper. I don't know what you do in your six minutes. The perfect chocolate souffle. Done. Lovely. Lovely. Nice, nice, nice. I'm dying to get in there, you know that. Mmm. Is it mm. good? That. Absolutely delicious. Fantastic. Well done. Well, really Gordon, well done. I've got one thing to say to you. Yes. Fuck off out of my kitchen, but only after you've done the washing up. <laughs> You're telling me to fuck off out of my own kitchen. <laughs> uh, Ravinda, you're like Susan. You still haven't got a boyfriend. Why? Oh, well, what can I say? It's Too many... difficult, isn't it? You have to pick all this game It's difficult to commit to one person as well, I find. <laughs> what about you? What you saying? You're putting You find it difficult to commit to one person? Yeah. Why don't you guys go out on a double date, you and Susan? Mm, huh? Find us, fix us up with some nice uh, fellas. Yeah. And a nice, nice little short-ass Frenchman like JB. Look at <laughs> over there. JB's the most charming man I've JB's met. JB's what? Yes, yeah. thank you. He's the, the most, most what? Charming man Charming? Here. He stinks of garlic. Look at him. <laughs> huh? ah, lovely. 
And again. Um, that's amazing wrist action you've got there. Just <laughs> I've well perfected it over the years. Seriously. <laughs> Ravinda, as they come out, you serve the table. Go straight to Johnny Vegas, yes? Yeah, yeah. Be careful, Johnny Vegas doesn't eat you. <laughs> okay, be very careful. Hands on here. Good girl. Off you go. Hey, Johnny. <laughs> Enjoy. Oh, it is worth hey. waiting for. I promise you, it's lovely. <laughs> Marry me! Now it's time for Janice Street Porter to sink her teeth into Bernard Matthews. Now, as you all know, I'm a little bit of a food snob, and this kind of thing isn't something I'd normally eat. Frankly, I'm surprised it's still on the shelves. Cheery Norfolk farmer Bernard Matthews has had the smile wiped off his face by three huge food scandals. First came turkey Twizzlers, bursting with so much saturated fats that many schools dropped them like a stone. Next came these horrifying images, employees playing baseball with live turkeys. And then, just as you thought it couldn't get any worse, one of his farms was hit by bird flu. During the outbreak, it emerged that Bernard Matthews, that great British food institution, actually uses large amounts of meat from Hungary. But does he tell you that on the packet? Like hell. Bernard Matthews, dinosaurs. Don't know where it's come from. Dinosaurs could have come from outer space. Bernard Matthews Jetters. Where have they flown in from? Bernard Matthews is in the middle of a massive rebranding exercise, but being clear and honest about the country of origin is much more important than flashy logos or spin. So it says turkey breast meat is often referred to as a superfood because it's naturally low in fat and cholesterol. But where does it come from, Bernard? Of the 21 packets I checked, only two gave the country of origin of the meat. Well, you might think that Bernard's only doing what every other turkey producer does, but you'd be wrong. Take a look at this lot. The Sainsbury's fresh British turkey. This, it tells you, product of Hungary. Clearly marked. What's Bernard's problem? Oh, Bernard's labelling isn't illegal, but it is potentially misleading. I think he's trading on his image as a Norfolk farmer to make his customers think all his turkey is English. But how does he do it? Simple. It's all about the packaging. All you have to do is make your product look English and not give any information about where the meat comes from. I'm going to make a turkey pie using meat from Brazil, Poland and Hungary and see if I can convince people it's actually English. Uh, so I've made the filling for my pie and now I'm going to put the pastry on it uh, and pop it in the oven. Here is my packaging. Turkey pie produced in England. This is perfectly legal. Now all I've got to do is see if I can flog them. Hi there. Hello, Jenny. Can I persuade you to taste some of my uh, turkey pie? Mmm, it's lovely. If I told you that the meat in that turkey pie comes from Hungary, Poland and Brazil. Yeah, I'm not going to catch nothing, am I? <laughs> the, the box is very misleading. When you look at that box, where do you think the meat in that pie comes from? I would think it comes from England. But if I put this box on the side and it said meat from Poland, Hungary and Brazil, would you buy it? More than likely not. Where do you think it comes from? Turkey. <laughs> I think we consumers have a right to know where our meat comes from. One person who agrees is David Clark from Red Tractor, the UK's leading independent food assurance scheme. If there's a red tractor on a piece of meat, you can be 100% sure it's British and carefully reared. Do you think it's important that when people buy food, they know exactly where it's come from? Absolutely. I mean, that's why we have a clear statement of country of origin within the logo. And therefore, the consumer cannot be confused. I think what I'm going to do is uh, go to Mr Matthews and ask him why he won't sign up for your, to your red tractor scheme. I, I think that's a good idea. I wrote to Bernard Matthews explaining my concerns, asking him why he doesn't label where his meat comes from and demanding that he signs up to the red tractor scheme. Two weeks later... Here I am in central London. I've been summoned to meet Bernard Matthews' chief executive. 
Hi. Hi. Hello, nice to meet you. Bernard doesn't get out much these days, so he sent his right-hand man to answer me. I have threatened to serve Bernard Matthews with a food asbo. Right. And he'll be my second one after Prince oh, no, Charles. I'll see your first one. Now, Bart, I've got a whole bag full mm. of packaging here, but I'm looking for where this turkey comes from. We've um, not realised uh, it's that important. In fact, we would welcome all of the origin of meat to come on because we'll find that we still have... The vast majority of our stuff comes from the UK. But hang on a minute, Bart. On the 5th of February, Bernard Matthews Company said all our turkeys are British. All our turkey eggs uh, come from our hatchery uh, yeah. and from our laying flocks, which are ours, in Norfolk. Yeah. Uh, so all our turkeys are. Now, those eggs may go to Hungary uh, to be born, but uh, to be reared. But the vast majority of all of our turkeys are in Norfolk and, and are reared in Norfolk. When you say all our turkeys are British, does that mean that the ones who are in Hungary, their mum and dad's are British? <laughs> uh, certainly, yeah. But they're living in Hungary? Yeah. So they're Hungarian turkeys? The vast majority of our products come from the UK and we're going to very clearly signpost uh, those products that are British. And what we're doing on the back is we're going to take a lead uh, on it and describe when products are British, it'll be very clearly stated it's British. And we've got agreement from... Red tractor, so we can use that. Uh, so logo. you are going to put the red tractor yeah. sign starting yeah. when? It will be by the beginning of September. So when it says under Bernard Matthews, that it's going to be in here. Yeah, made from Turkey, from our own farms, or from wh wherever else. So that's a promise. Yeah. By September the first. We'll get them on. Okay, it's a deal. Okay. So. Hello, Janet. Hello, gorgeous. Nice to see you, my darling. Thank you. You look you. great. Um, Thank you. I dressed up the carriages. First of all, congratulations. Yeah. yeah, I do feel a real sense of you achievement. You made Bernard Matthews, Mr. Beautiful, um, eat his words. Well done. I think they were scared of us. That's yeah. a brilliant thing. And what are they going to do? What, what exactly well, is he doing? Well, the amazing thing, they're going to sign up to the Red Tractor Scheme. So all the meat that they use, yep. that is bred on farms in the UK, is going to have the Red Tractor. Good. And meat that comes from abroad is going to have the country of origin clearly labelled on the packet. Bloody good news. So they're going to be far more honest, which is yeah, fantastic. fantastic. How is he going to stick to it? What, what's well, he going to do to make sure? He promised me that by September this year, they will change their labelling on yeah, their good. packaging. And if he doesn't stick to it, what are you going to do to... Go Mr. out to Beautiful? Norfolk and deep fry his turkey twizzler. <laughs> I will. I'll go out there. Uh, bloody well done. I think he was scared more of you as opposed to the Asbo. You You're know not that. scared of me, uh, are you, Gordon? Beautiful. I'm not scared of you at all, my Janet. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, my darling. See Great ya. lipstick. Uh. Next on the menu, will heavyweight Johnny Vegas knock me out in the recipe challenge? Look at the choice. Look at the array of that. Claridges. Looks nice. B&B yeah. &B and Bognor Regis. And will the girls do Lancashire proud? How do you think we did? I hope so, you know that. Yeah. I really do. Welcome back to the F-Word. Now, time to find out who is the Michelin-style chef and who is the Michelin man. Are you ready? Uh, yes, I am ready. Let's go, big boy. And I'm confident. What are you finishing it with? Well, a bit of olive oil. OK. Oh, my anchovies! Whoa! <laughs> yeah, I forgot. I want the fresh ones from the bottom. Look at that. Hey, it looks nice. Here's my baby coming out. Holy mackerel. Look at that baby. <laughs> A little bit of basil on the top. I think yours screams Michelin, mine screams family. I think yours screams cheese shop. You know what I do with it? Go on. It's late night phone calls for the rest of your life. Hey, no. do you remember that time we did that pizza? Johnny, fuck no. off. Look at that. Look now at that. Then, now oh. then, look at the choice, look at the look array at that. of that. Claridges. Looks nice. B&B &B yeah. and Bognor Regis. Right. All right then. Oh, I like that sound, that crispy sound. Just to even it up. Right. Hey, that looks nice. Right, listen. Yeah, you see how I've juxtaposed the sandwiches? Yeah, I know, I know, I know, but you've got three seasons and four on... bits of pizza. <laughs> yeah, it's based on French architecture. <laughs> I know that, taste-wise, that'll be phenomenal. Good luck. I know, I know that, that, you know, that's, that's why you earn money from it. That's why I'm 18 hey. stone. Right, JB, I'm off you go. Entertainer. Yes, <laughs> entertainer. Right. Off you go. Yep. The, the Three Seasons by Johnny and the uh, Clarity's Pizza by, by me. Jim bought a rehearsed, two coughs, when you put his down. Money's exchanged ends in you know, the brown envelope <laughs> in the garage. Dish number one. Ooh. And your dish number two. Bon appétit. Oh, this one first, yeah? Yeah. yeah. It looks crispy. Yes. Mmm. I always like sun dried tomatoes, real oh, tomato kick. Not too much cheese either. Mm. OK. 
very it's square, shape. isn't it? It's a very different <coughs> very shape. Very square. And a much thicker base. Base, yeah. Cheesier for sure. It's actually crunchier okay. than the other one. Mm. Okay, big boy. I hope you're not going to make a monkey at me, Johnny B. Johnny oh, B. Johnny come B. Come on, come on, come on. Right, we're good come on. To, okay. we're good to Papa. Uh, uh, no, uh, very close. What very, very close. Uh, it's a three to two. It's a three to two. Yeah. So it's very close. Uh, uh, come on. Yeah. Come come on. On. Okay. Oh, yeah. Come yeah, on. Okay. Yeah. Come on. So the, the no, winner is. You're looking at me, which is telling me that you're going to say him. No. Not as if you're trying to tell me well, who you charge your best. It's you, Gordon. Oh, yes. yes. Johnny boy. <laughs> Get in there. Well done. Thank fuck for that. Three two. So it was close. Three, I had money on myself. <laughs> Hey, you can hold your head high, my man. That was fucking delicious. Oh. Cheesy, but delicious. Oh, yeah, hey, whatever. Do me a favour. Well, Take your pizza and never fuck about never the kitchen. Darken, <laughs> never darken this restaurant again with mine. And don't shit on the kitchen floor on the way out. No, no, I'll save that for the restaurant. <laughs> hey, well done, big boy. Now, for all you animal lovers out there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Right, fuck it, I'm going to open a pizza here. That's too careful now. Last two tables, and I'll dust. You put them on, yes? Here we go. And away. OK, we got two sixes. Thank you. Hey, JB. Yes. Thanks for doing your job. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah? You I know in France, they only want to work fucking 32 hours a week, but thanks so much for coming. <laughs> yes. Yeah? Excellent. Uh, Susan, yes, are you giving yeah. JB the eye? Are you trying to... No, we were telling him... ...mince we, him up? No, cos we like no. John... Uh, what, John... ...whatever he's called. John Baptist. John the Baptist, John Baptist. yeah. <laughs> that's right. No, it's called John Baptist. We... Yes. Boring. Good girl. Thank you, my darling. We told him that you told us he was gay. Hey. Oh, fuck. He's not! He's not gay! He's not! He's not! He's not! He's not! He's You're about as discreet as fucking Johnny Vegas. He's definitely, definitely not gay. Chocolate souffle was perfect, absolutely amazing texture, just really nice and gooey and choppy in the middle. And the uh, mint chocolate chip ice cream was a kind of a throwback to my childhood, so like quite sort of retro little touch on the side, so it was lovely. I thought the dessert was delicious and definitely worth five pounds. Really beautiful, melt in the mouth, really, really lovely actually. Give me the results, please. Now, ladies, Justin. How do you think we did? 50. 50? Yes, yeah. I hope so, you know that. Yeah. I really do. We worked yeah. hard, we did. Some of them went out a little bit lopsided. However, the flavour was fantastic. For dessert... Oh, shit. 50 out of 50! Yes! That is perfection. Well done. 50 out of 50 for dessert. Oh, so that's good news. Yeah. Now, will you do me a favour? Yeah. No, no, no! No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Not hold on. Not word. Hold on. Ho hold on. Come with me to the dining room. Let's go. Out. Let's go. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. your chefs for this evening, yes? The Lancy Lassies. Hey! Get in there. Right, go say hello. Go say hello. Go say hello. Go in there. Oh. 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 F-word series three, done.